this was the most confusing thing that I found when I was first starting. So if we take a look at these equations, this is all assuming that we're defining the lift and the drag as if it were through the quarter chord. But we know that moment is a, a force times a distance. So there is theoretically a point we can, we can move these lift and drag to somewhere where the moment equals zero. So that's where the resultant actually passes through. Uh, and you don't have to include that moment. So we're gonna show a way to physically interpret that here. So the first step to getting a sense of that would be to decompose the lift and the drag to this Fn and Dn that is along uh, perpendicular to the chord and right along the chord. And since that's passing through the same point still, the quarter chord, you still have that m quarter, m quarter chord, which is the same value. So these would be calculated with uh, Cl cos alpha plus Cd sine alpha, and then Dn would be Cd cos alpha plus Cl sine alpha. So if we want to get a sense of where that moment is equal to zero, the next step, the center of pressure is where that point is called. That's defined such that m about the center of pressure point is equal to zero. So we already know that m quarter is equal to negative fn times the chord length times wherever this COP, this center of pressure fraction is minus a quarter. So that's, it's some point in there. It, it's, uh, well, it's this point here relative to a quarter times C or FCOP times C. And once we have the FN and DN in that point, the moment's equal to zero there. So that it's an equivalent physical scenario between these two. Uh, we have two forces in a moment equivalent to these two forces with no moment about this point. So here we can go and solve for that. So we just can say M quarter is equal to so we have Fn times C times a quarter negative FCOP. And we know that it's also equal to from previously one half rho V squared SCM times C. So we can equate those and manipulate it to solve for FCOP. And we end up with a quarter negative all these coefficients from airflowtools.com. So that's coefficient of moment over Cl cos alpha plus Cd sine alpha. And we can take a look at what that looks like in Excel now. So this is the data directly from airfulltools.com. So we have the, the CL, we have the CD, and the CM. And I mean, when I was starting this graph of CM physically, I couldn't understand exactly what it meant. Because these, these numbers, uh, when you get more into stability, this is one of the most important parameters. So it's, it's nice to have a physical sense of what it is. So here I've just calculated Fn and the COP chord fraction from uh, the calculations we just did on these, on these sheets. And if you plot that, you can see that for a given Reynolds number, for this airfoil, this is the Epler 420, you can see that the center of pressure, as you increase your angle of attack, the center of pressure goes from, at zero angle of attack, about 45% chord. As you increase the angle of attack and increase your lift, the center of pressure converges towards about 0.32% chord here. So, your lift, as it increases, as your angle of attack increases, it actually moves forward along the chord. You can take a look at some other airfoils, what they do. This is a NACA 2415. So that would look like, do we have that here? There we go. That looks like this one here. Very slightly curved slightly cambered. So that one, 
that could be for for instance for an H dad. That one at zero, it's also about 0.4 for that chord, and that one converges to just below 0.25, so 25% chord. And now a lot of these airfoils, so this is a symmetric airfoil, NACA 0012, so that looks like this here, that's a symmetric airfoil that could be for, for instance, for a vertical stabilizer. And here, this is its chord fraction, center pressure chord fraction, and that hovers around 0.25 most of the time. So even though you're changing animal attack a lot, it's staying around 0.25. So that's one of the reasons why so most of these airfoils converge to or hover around 25% chord. Um, that's one of the reasons why that standard is used as the point to define the moment around. So we can take a look at some other interesting ones here. So this would be an airfoil that's recurved. So the camber goes from positive to negative at the back. So it sort of creates a lot of lift in the front and then compensates the moment in the back by sort of almost like a H dab would do on a on a full air, airplane, you'd have the main wing in the front providing lift and the h dab in the back providing downforce to balance, it, balance out that moment. And here you see the COP chord fraction of this airfoil is very constant, around uh, 0.25 the entire, no matter how much you change the angle of attack. So this kind of thing could be useful for for instance, airplanes that don't have horizontal stabilizers, they might have instead a little bit of wing sweep and wing um, twist to stabilize it. And this airfoil on its own is already quite stable, or especially things like helicopter blades might sometimes have this recurve um, so that you don't have a big change in moment as a function of your lift. So yeah, that's how to interpret the coefficient of moment and get a feel for where is your resultant lift and drag forces along the chord of the airfoil.